And my next question is, how does the body remove arterial plaques and how quickly or slowly, slowly does that process take? Yeah, so in terms of, usually when we're talking about atherosclerotic plaque, we're talking about soft plaque first because it take, then it takes a while to become calcified. The calcified plaque, it doesn't really seem like the body does too well with breaking it down the same way it does with soft plaque. With soft plaque, what happens is you have macrophages, uh, you know, a type of white blood cell that eat things up. Uh, and what you have is you've got macrophages that come along and they take up a lot of the foreign or what's, what's considered foreign by the body. If we're going to slightly anthropomorphize it a bit, <laughs> um, it tries to take up things like it does take up LDL particles that are in the plaque that are either oxidized, glycated, whatever it may be, and other compounds that may be deranged because they've been there for so long um, because the damage that they're there for has not actually been ameliorated in any way or at least enough to enough of a degree to warrant them having done their job, having completed their job. So macrophages consist, they compose a lot of the plaque. The, the, so so that, that's, we can infer from that that that's one of the ways in which the body is trying to take up the things that make up the plaque. It's macrophages taking up these foreign proteins. However, that only happens whenever these proteins are deranged. It doesn't happen whenever they're not deranged because, well, if that were the case, then you'd have, I think that you'd see a lot more atherosclerosis. Um, that, and it would also take less time to accumulate. Um, but in the cases where, in the cases where these proteins are not, um, deranged in any way, they're just there for longer periods of time. They haven't become oxidized. They haven't become glycated. The body isn't actively trying to get rid of the plaque. It's actually trying to form it. That's what the LDL is there for. The LDL is there to supply the tissues that are damaged with cholesterol because cholesterol is one of the fundamental elements of a cell. It forms the the cell membrane, it forms your lipid rafts. It doesn't even just help to separate the phospholipids in the phospholipid bilayer of your cell membranes, but it actually forms lipid rafts, which is, you know, sort larger concentrations of cholesterol that hold, um, that, that sort of integrate elements of the cell membrane together. Um, and so they, they start to build, but what's supposed to happen though, is the injury is supposed to be repaired. Um, and then the LDL can sort of de-sequestrate itself, I, I don't know, uh, de-deposit itself <laughs> uh, and, and, you know, sort of take off um, and then go back to the, the liver to be picked up. Um, of course, this all implies volition for sake of conception, for ease of conception, but in reality, it's all chemically, chemical pulling, chemical pushing, chemical pressures. That's what's supposed to happen. Um, but yes, if, if those proteins do not leave and they become deranged, then the body is actively, it's, it's trying to take those proteins up. And so you'll see macrophages in atherosclerotic plaque, but that actually in turn builds plaque. So I guess, I guess the body isn't really ever trying to get rid of plaque. It's actually trying to heal the injury as much as possible, which as, which as a consequence builds the, the plaque up. But what's supposed to happen is naturally the injury is supposed to heal. And then as a consequence of that, the plaque, there's no pressure for that plaque to be there. So it starts to regress. Um, it's, uh, think of the best way that I can put it, just to uh, put a final note here, is they're actually referred to as micro calluses in certain papers when you read them. Just think of them as calluses. Like if you abrade the skin enough, if you, I mean, I actually have one on my thumb here for putting a bunch of push pins into the wall. Um, you'll build a callus because there's abrasions going on and it's, it's damaged to skin. It may not be a super, super serious injury, but it, it's an irritation nevertheless, and you build up a callus. But once you stop abrading the area, there's no pressure for that callus to be there. And so then it starts to regress because that energy that is being used there, according to the Darwinian theory of evolution, it's, uh, it, there's no pressure for it to be there and that energy could be used elsewhere uh, that the body deems to be more important. So it can take it away and allocate it elsewhere, even if it's a small callus. And we're talking about a bigger callus and a more significant one when it comes to the interior of the, of the endothelial, uh, of the endothelium. Right. So I, 
I guess I'm specifically wondering what the mechanism is behind this receding of the plaque um, and the time scale in which it takes place. Because I gathered that some people feel that problems arise when uh, glycation damage or inflammation occurs at the same place in an artery with too great a frequency that before a plaque can recede, it, another one is formed on top of that and another one is mm. formed on top of that. And then yeah. you get, yeah. So yeah, how yeah, much yeah. time do you have? How much damage, uh, how, how much do you have to limit that damage, the frequency of the damage in order for your body to be able to handle the plaque load? That's a good question. I think it's going to vary depending on the person. Um, I think that, yeah, you bring up a good point because it it does become a positive feedback loop. There's initial damage, and then you just keep damaging the the tissue. But then it it doesn't even just become more damage to tissue. Then it just becomes it becomes a derangement of the of the already existing plaque in a way, which actually leads to more plaque because you you've glycated the elements of the plaque. And you've oxidized the elements of the plaque, and then you build more, and then you build even more. And then, um, so I guess that there's not a definitive answer that I can give on that because it, it I mean, in terms of trying to determine a certain frequency by which the, the plaque, a certain limited frequency by which the plaque can actually start to regress, I, I know that I just said that it's highly individual, and I'm not saying otherwise. However, I think it, if you're going to look at the dispersion around, if you, if you could actually collect data on that and, and the dispersion of the, of the frequency, you know, mean plus or minus the standard deviation of the frequency by which you actually observe plaque to be uh, regressing, assuming causal relationship there. I think that the dispersion would actually be a lot lower than other random variables. Okay. Uh, despite, but I, I can't give a definitive mean for that uh, I, I don't I, i'm not really sure i don't know if there's even really a way to to measure that definitively um i'd have to put something together hypothetically and then tell people to do a study on that or something because i can't do the study myself but <laughs> you know at yeah, the I'm, moment just yeah. anecdotally from some of those interviewees of dave mack for example they they do speak about like their cac scores going down um, and I was curious about the time scale for that to occur or, or, and what the circumstances were for that to happen. Yeah. Well, here's another thing too. A lot of, I'm not, when I say a lot of people, I don't know the exact empirics because I don't think anyone does, but I've heard, I've heard people say that whenever they go carnivore, they, they'll know, they're no, they'll know their CAC score initially and it's quite high sometimes like pretty high which we know it only measures calcified plaque and so it's not the most unstable plaque it, the most unstable plaque is the soft plaque but nevertheless it means it means that there was there's been plaque there long enough for it to become calcified and a lot of it to become calcified what they'll see though is sometimes even after a year of being carnivore their cac score before it comes down it'll actually go up quite a bit and that was interesting when I first saw it, because, I mean, my initial thought was, wow, so they're still getting damage to their arteries. Like, what's going on? So they must be doing something wrong. Like, their body might not be adapting to it appropriately. Like, who, who's to say? But then I thought further, I was like, okay, well, maybe. But calcified, a CC score, if it measures calcified plaque, that means that they could just, instead of having a, a uh, an increase in the amount of plaque buildup they could theoretically they could have the same amount of plaque but more of it is just calcified there's who's to say that they're actually just building uh -huh. more and more plaque what if a lot of it is just becoming calcified now that wasn't observed on the cac score before because it existed a soft plaque you know mm -hmm. they didn't actually measure non-calcified plaque volume ncpv uh, mm -hmm. which is a newer phenomenon that i'm seeing um or at least a it's become more mainstream if it existed before um but that's also something that I've seen sometimes when we're, I mean, in terms of the frequency of, by which someone can see a regression, uh, the, the frequency of damage, like we were just discussing, uh, that you would have to reach, you know, the decreased frequency by which you can actually expect a, 
decrease, a regression of, of plaque. Sometimes, I mean, who's to say that they're not exhibiting a, a plaque decrease in terms of soft plaque? even if they have an increase in CAC score. So then it becomes even more noisy. Like yeah. we need like, so, I mean, I never want to, like I'm, I'm a curious thinker, so I'm not using that as some sort of like scapegoat for people exhibiting a higher CAC score when going carnivore. It could very well be because of exactly what people are saying. Like their people's initial thoughts, like, oh, this is actually getting worse, not better. And then we have to actually look at what's going on. But I do think that it's, if you want a better assessment of that, you'd look at non-calcified plaque volume. Um, I'm just, I, I'm, I'm, I worry about the, the expense of that uh, compared to a CAC score at the moment, if it's quite nascent. Um, and then same thing with the potential radiation exposure. I'm, yeah. not, I'm not familiar right. with that. Um, so that, that as well, though, pretty sure there actually is radiation exposure with that. Yeah. So you want to be careful with that. Yeah, um, so sure. yeah, there, there's no definitive answer I can give for, for frequency. I just, from anecdotes, I mean, I've, I've heard of people saying that they can see a decrease in CAC after a year. I've, I've heard of that before, but who's to say really for every single person, it's really difficult to do that.